Well, the U.S. is sending powerful weapons as part of that $800 million military aid package, including so-called kamikaze drones. It's all part of the effort to beef up the Ukrainian resistance and send the Russians into retreat. CBS's David Martin has more from the Pentagon. Defense Secretary Austin stopped in the eastern European nation of Slovakia to lobby for an urgent shipment of the air defense missiles which Ukraine has been using to keep Russian warplanes at bay. Our goal has been to uh, continue to uh, reinforce uh, those things that have worked for, for the Ukrainian forces. Slovakia uses the same Russian-made system known as the S-300 as Ukraine. So it could be pressed into service immediately without any need for training. It has a range um, upwards of 80 to 100 miles uh, and can gauge targets up to 80,000 feet. Retired Air Force General David Deptula. And they've been firing those missiles. They have the radars, they have the launchers. What they need are the replenishment missiles. The Ukrainians also need a resupply of the anti-tank weapons they have been using against Russian armored vehicles, especially the Javelin, which pops up and strikes tanks from the top where the armor is thinnest. On Wednesday, President Biden promised to send 2,000 more Javelins, plus 7,000 other anti-tank weapons. That's far more than the number of uh, uh, tanks that the Russians have inside Ukraine right now. So I think that leaves them in very good shape to continue this campaign for some weeks or months to come. The weapon shipments are being driven across the border from Poland and Romania. So far, the Russians have been unable to intercept them. They're going to simply have to do that to shut off the flow of lethal aid. And if they don't, the tide could turn against them. If Putin gets desperate, he might decide to attack those weapon shipment sites in Poland and Romania directly. That could start a war the U.S. couldn't stay out of. Nora? David Martin at the Pentagon. Thank you.